Hey guys, what's up? It's Shining Polaris. No more about my room, but I just really, really enjoy it. I gotta just show it off. Um, so just letting you know, I this video is a little bit late. It is my uh, thoughts on this past uh, week Dynamite, October 28th. Um, and it is a little bit delayed because uh, once again, I was um, sick. So uh, I'm just, um, yeah. So now I'm, I feel a little bit better, but I still have to be off uh, for like another week, I believe. Um, interesting fact so my birthday just passed and uh i had tickets to go see dynamite which was going to be in milwaukee on the 28th that would have been my birthday and i was planning to go to the casino because if you know milwaukee we have the potawatomi casino there then i was going to eat you know i was going to make a whole day just hanging out in milwaukee and then end it with uh watching dynamite with with my good friend um obviously that uh that didn't happen so but it was still cool anyway the episode was really good um so yeah i'm just gonna run down through the whole episode and uh in order and if i'm out of order uh i apologize <laughs> uh because i'm trying to remember this uh so first match was uh wardlow versus uh adam hangman page and i really like this match because um, who doesn't like uh, Hangman? But I really, really like Wardlow. And, um, you know, at first I thought, because you already knew Hangman was going to win, but I was like, please don't, you know, squash this match because Wardlow's supposed to be, you know, this he, this this big guy and obviously he's MJF bodyguard. So, you know, he should be kicking ass like no problem. But he did. He did. He looked really good in there. Um, he beat it up Adam like more than half the time there. And uh, he actually did. Uh, you know, the F F10 move on uh, Adam. And uh, I really thought, oh my God, you know, he landed that move and that's like his finisher. So you're like, oh my God, he's going to beat him. But Adam rolled out of the ring. Um, Adam did uh, try to knock him down a few times. I think he did the buckshot lariat twice on Wardlow before uh, he finished him. And uh, yeah, so Adam obviously won that and he is uh, going to full gear um, against who? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> but yeah, so um, th they, again, that was a good match and um, can't wait to see uh, what will happen to uh, Wardlow after this. Um, obviously, we're all waiting for that um, that turn on MJF because it's only inevitable when that's going to happen. But um, is it going to happen soon? In my opinion, you know, MJF is dealing with the inner circle right now. So, you know, that storyline can, can wait till next year. But when that happens, it's going to be great. Uh, let's see. The next the next match is uh, Eddie Kingston versus um, Seidel. And um, I believe this, uh, this match, and I think the Sean Spears one, were added because it was supposed to be Tay Conti versus um, Abaddon. But... Abaddon got hurt and I don't know what else you know what else happened in there but um she you know they they took that match match off so but uh if you watch my AW Heels uh episode um which I just just taped as well um she was on there and she looked great so I can't wait till I see her you know like uh, see her on in the ring again because I think she lost a lot of weight and probably improved her wrestling so yeah I can't I can't wait to see her so anyway Eddie Kingston and Seidel um Another another good match. Um, obviously with uh, with King uh, going to full gear, facing off uh, John Moxley for the for the world title. Uh, again, you already knew he was gonna he was gonna beat Seidel, but um, they both are really good at you know submission wrestling. And obviously Kingston is trying to send a message that you know he he's going to make uh, Moxley quit. So at the end, he went and did the bulldog move that um, that Moxley usually uses. He, uh, Kingston used that on Seidel at the end and made, um, Seidel, uh, tap out, but he keeps choking him out because he s says he wants Seidel to say, I quit. So, um, that's what happened there. Um, throughout the episode, you have, uh, Mox and Kingston's, uh, video, little video promos at each other. And, uh, again, I, I love when they both, when they both speak because they, they just are so believable and it's just so much heart every time they're, they're on the camera talking. So that was, um. That happened throughout the whole episode. Uh, let's see. Next was um, uh, Chris Jericho and MJF little town hall meeting segment thing. Um, so this was kind of uh, set up almost like the Jericho and Orange Cassidy de debate. So you had, you know, Jericho and the inner circle on one side with MJF. And they're just, uh, then you had a couple wrestlers coming in asking questions. I actually really like that part the most. Um, you had Luchasaurus uh, asking the question, um, Britt Baker and Reba asking a question. And then the best was Peter Avalon 
um, asking a question. And if you uh, didn't know, if you don't watch Dark, uh, Peter Avalon and Brandon Cutler finally had their match where, against each other where one of them has to win. It ended up being Brandon Cutler for the win and then Leva Bates leaving um, uh, Avalon. So Avalon coming up asking, can he join the inner circle? He just looks so sad and so lost. And then you had the inner circle just like, ah, yeah, get out of here. You're so silly asking that question. So that was that was the funniest part, but it's also sad. Um, the biggest part of uh, that town hall meeting was, guess who showed up? It was Eric Bischoff. He uh, came to ask uh, the last few serious questions. Um, the Funniest part to me, and I, everyone thought this too, was when um, Eric came up to and revealed like, okay, he's going to be the one asking the questions too. You hear everybody in the background um, yell, uh, Eric B, Eric B. It literally sounded like if you weren't paying attention, it sounded like they were chanting NXT, NXT. <laughs> I was like, are we really chanting that right now? But no, if you listen carefully, they're obviously saying Eric, not not NX. But it was just funny because I thought that too. It's like, why? Why are we chanting NXT? Um, so yeah, so so uh, Eric Bischoff asked um, them the hard questions. Obviously, the big one is, um, you know, how do we know you're not going to turn on um, Chris Jericho to MJF? Because obviously MJF turned on the Nightmare Family. And so it got, got heated between uh, Jericho and MJF. Um, then, uh, so then they started being face to face and it was like, you know, MJF was like, what do I have to do to, you know, basically please you guys? And Jericho's like, well, you have to beat me and, or you had not beat me yet. So yeah, there you go. We got another great full gear match there. We have MJF versus, uh, Chris Jericho. And if, uh, MJF wins, he joins the inner circle. So I'm curious, how is that going to work out? Because either... This maybe so you know on on Twitter and whatever people are like oh maybe this is gonna be the time where uh, Wardlow will turn on MJF and he'll join the inner circle I don't know um, God there's just so many so many great possibilities so uh, so yeah so we got that going on um, so right after that went straight into the match I wanted to see TNT uh, Championship match this is Cody versus uh, Orange Cassidy this is a lumberjack match uh, which means guys will be on the side. Um, uh, either fighting fighting each other or just pushing the the two guys back into the ring um the reason why they did this is because they knew dark order was going to interfere and they each can have their their people on on the side so you have cody coming in obviously he had he had um uh, arn anderson but he's mostly just coaching so he's in the corner but his two people in the lumberjack was uh you know obviously dustin and qt then you have orange cassidy come out obviously with with the best friends um again great match oh god i hated the ending for this but um i don't know <laughs> i don't know what's gonna go with cassidy from here but anyway uh um great a great match you had dark order full dark order there uh they interfered interfered as much as they can beated both guys out every time they landed on their side of the ring um i think the funniest moment was uh you had orange cassidy kind of fell backwards best friends caught him threw him back in the ring and then right after cody went and fell the same way best friends caught him looked at him and then dropped him they're like they're like oh, we're not helping you um and then right after that actually uh trent went and, and hit uh cody in the face um and uh that's uh that staggered him a little bit and then later um you got you got uh art anderson punching um cassidy in the face which uh, ended up um ended up costing cassidy the match well it was a combination of uh john silver kicking cassidy in the face and then he fell over art anderson punched him in the face and then that's when uh cody got on top of him for for the pin so uh cody won that match um and then you kind of you can hear the con the the commentators they're just like I think I think Cody knew that Dark Order hit him, but you know he's just walking away like he pretend he didn't he didn't do anything. But you know obviously you should do these little things that eventually you know Cody's gonna turn heel. Um, I think what's happening with this so with with Cassidy losing this one, I wasn't as sad as the first time because you kind of knew he was gonna lose because no way he's gonna beat freaking Cody. I think Cody is going to try to become a major villain and he's going to just beat all of our favorites. So like him against Darby, he's going to beat Darby and then he's going to keep beating everybody Have people hate him so much. I mean, I already hate him. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, um, 
that's so you got that there. So obviously full gear match, Cody versus uh, Darby on that one. Um, also, as a result of this match, you have for the buy-in, you're gonna have Orange Cassidy versus uh, John Silver, which I will say are like the two big fan favorites. Uh, so that that will be actually very interesting uh, to watch. Um, because I actually think that's cool that they're giving John uh, Silver like a pay-per-view chance because he's been really over on uh, YouTube so far. I think he's also going to win the BTE championship. But anyway, so uh, next after that, you had Serena D versus uh, Layla Hirsch uh, for the NWA uh, uh, World Women's title. Um, so Thunder Rosa, so in a whole nother match that happened last weekend, it was Serena D versus uh, Thunder Rosa for the NWA uh, championship, and Serena D beat at Thunder Rosa. Um, what does that mean? That usually means that uh, the that Thunder Rosa have signed and, and working full time somewhere else now, and uh, the speculation is that she has joined um, NXT or WWE. Uh, uh, I think she tried. I don't know if she, like, I think she, she's trying to, like, tease something on, on Twitter. She's not really saying, you know, which way she went. But um, uh, from what I've heard, um, Billy Corgan, who is the owner uh, of NWA, said that, no, she just simply signed full-time with NWA. Um, but everywhere else saying that she signed with WWE. But um, I like Thunder Rosa. You know, wherever she wants to go, good for her because it's like, you know, I know WWE is like the dream to go there. So she goes to WWE, good for her. Um, and they have a win better women's division anyway. But uh, with Serena uh, D winning the NWA championship and she did cut a promo saying that she's going to do big things with that title. Um, I really, really like that because it makes it more, it makes it sound like more that AEW and uh, NWA are going to join like forces, which would be really cool because everybody's been talking about uh, Nick Atlas and his, you know, him against Cody. I think that would be really cool um, to have that happen one day. So anyhow, uh, great match between um, Deeb and uh, Hirsch. And this is only Hirsch's second time on AEW. And uh, she was really good. I actually saw her uh, at um, um, the Spring Break. Right, where's the Spring Break? Yeah, Spring Break Collective. So that was really cool to see her like on TV. So, um, so yeah. So, so uh, Serena Deeb, uh, you know, uh, won that match. But obviously, she's she always makes whoever she goes against with looking looking good. So that's really cool. Uh, and then after that, you got the main event, which is uh, Kenny Omega versus uh, Pentagon Junior or Penta El Zero, um, and uh, yeah, so if people aren't following Twitter or, or watching on YouTube, uh, people are like, why isn't Ray Phoenix, you know, in this match? Because he, uh, he, he beated Penta last, uh, last week, but he did actually got hurt in the match. So, which means that, uh, you know, he just gave it, gave it to, uh, his brother, um, with huge influence by, uh, Eddie Kingston. So it's kind of cool that every time there's like a real accident that involves, they try to add that to the storyline. So actually, and it, it worked out great. But regardless, the match just looked, you know, um, amazing. I mean, they're they're both they're both extremely good. I, I mean, obviously, you know, Kenny is like, you know, God level, boss level up here. So, but but Penta, but Penta's up there too. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Good match. Um, really, really close. Couple times you see you see Penta doing some crazy ass moves and flips onto Kenny, and I really thought he was gonna um win it. Actually, what he did, he did his his um pile driver move onto Kenny on the on the ramp, and I thought that was really over. But of course, like I said, Kenny boss mode up here kicked out of that, and then um he took several tries to try to get that uh, one winded angel move, but he finally landed it on Penta, and that what got him the win. So, um. Kenny Omega with the win. You're going to have huge match at Full Gear. That's Kenny Omega versus Adam Henry Page. That is going to be a must-see. So with Full Gear coming up, I think all the matches uh, we got now, I think we got everything. You have the buy-in, which is uh, um, Orange Cassidy versus John Silver, and then a whole bunch of matches. Not in any order. I have no idea what order it is. You have um, Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara, Chris Jericho versus MJF, uh, Kenny Omega versus um, Adam Hamley Page. Oh, you got Hikaru Shida versus uh, Nyla Rose. Um, and then uh, uh, FTR versus Young Bucks. And then um, 
uh, John Moxley versus Eddie Kingston. Did I left out anything? I think that's I think that's all. Oh, <laughs> Cody versus Darby. So yeah, so you basically got all great great matches. All of them are are going to be very very good, and uh, can't, can't wait to see it. Um, I will probably be posting another video on what I think about those matches probably after next week's Dynamite. So that is cool. All right, this video went a little bit longer, but uh, thank you guys for listening to me rant. Hope you like my outfit, <laughs> and I will be on Twitter and uh, all, all that all the time. So see you on there. Follow me everywhere at Shining Polaris or at The Shining Polaris on Facebook. So thank you guys um, for paying attention, and I appreciate you. Have a happy Halloween. Mwah, mwah. <laughs>